And we are live. It is Wednesday night. It's March. It's Wednesday, March the 12th. Oh, I, you know, I keep trying to do this, Mr. Kitson, and I just can't get away with it. Star date, 27th of March, 2013. There you go. Captain's log. Captain's log. You kind of beat the captain's log. But as you can see, we're here on a Wednesday night, as per usual, at nine o'clock, with VT Talk, as ever was. And as you can see, over my right shoulder, my good friend, Oppo, and... Uh, how else can I describe him? Careful. He's careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's the man with the new mixer. It's Dave Kitson. Good evening, Dave. How are you doing? Evening, everybody. I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying yourself? Enjoying the new mixer? You working it all right? Yeah. Yeah. I know that button there shuts me up. Okay, we'll remember that one. If we can remote access the remote, that will be fine. But the person in charge <laughs> of accessing the remoting, remotely accessing... Do you do... Uh, <laughs> There. Should we start again? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just. It's going to be a slightly more relaxed night tonight. I hope. I'm, I'm possibly relaxed as a newt. But in in the in the in the indescribable window, we have the effervescent loveliness that is the one and only Sav. Good evening to you, Sav. How are you doing? Good evening. I am absolutely fine. Are you sober? I am. I wish to hell I. Well, I haven't had a drink, but I'm, I'm just. It's been one of those days today, and, and had last night not been last night, today might not have been the day that it was, but last night I got a little bit of a thrill. I quite enjoyed last night at about 20 past seven. And if anybody was doing what I was doing at 20 past seven last night, you're sad people, you really are, but never mind. Good on you for doing it and kudos, but we'll talk about that right after the titles, because we've got to play them in, otherwise nobody knows what the show is. So, hello, <laughs> good evening. And welcome to VT Talk. <sighs> there we are. That was the titles. We can do the show properly now. We're going to try and get it all right. I will remind you. Because of the shirt I have on, goes to close up, or as close as it will go, doink, read it. August the 17th, in Tamworth, Vape Fest. Those of you watching in HD, that is everybody, because we're only putting it out at one resolution for the next six weeks. Vape Fest, August 17th, Tamworth. Be there, or be an oblate spheroid, and you're perfectly safe. I won't be there. I shall be away on holiday. Um... It's already booked, it's booked every, well, it's booked three years in advance, but there you go. That's what's going to be going on. Um, back on with the show. 20 past seven last night, what were you doing, Div? <laughs> uh, I was... Keep it clean. ...parked on a train just outside Darlington. Lovely place to be parked as well, it has to be said. At 20 past seven last night, Sav, what were you doing? I can't remember what I was doing at 20 past seven tonight, never mind last night. It's that bad, is it? Yes. <laughs> well, 20 past seven last night, I was tuned in to Parliament TV in the UK. And what I saw shocked me more than somewhat. It was uh, the pre-recess adjournment debate, which sounds, it's a highfalutin title, for something I really didn't understand all that well, but the MP for rugby got on his hind legs and delivered a speech that sent shivers down my spine. Shall we play it in, do you think? I think we probably should, I man. think we probably should. <laughs> if you didn't see it live, you probably won't have seen it on demand or you won't know where to have found it, but here it is for your viewing pleasure. This is what a proper MP can do and what they all should do. Watch this and clap and cheer at the end of it. Mark Paul. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow my honourable friend, the Member for Stafford, who speaks with such authority on health matters in his constituency. Um, having set up and run a business for 25 years before entering here, I'm always keen to meet with businesses in my constituency, and some 18 months ago, I arranged to visit a new retailer with a business called Smoke No Smoke, run by a very entrepreneurial Jim Lacey, and this business sells e-cigarettes, and on my visit I learnt about the product 
and though the customers for the product are often people uh, seeking to give up smoking who have come to include a member of my own staff. And it's through his contact and his visit to the shops that I became aware of a potential EU directive which is of particular concern to this sector. And this directive could bring this particular business to an end and affect many people who are trying to uh, stop smoking. Now, of course, most smokers know that smoking is bad for their health and many have wanted to quit, but quit rates are extremely low with only 3 to 5 per cent of people uh, seeking to quit managing to do so. And so many have turned to e-cigarettes as a substitute, and this consists of an electronic inhaler that vaporises a liquid into an aerosol mist simulating the act of tobacco smoking. It's the same size and same shape as a cigarette. It's held in the same way and treated as a cigarette, but the difference is that while cigarette smokers smoke for the nicotine but die from the tars and gases re released by the burning of tobacco, e-cigarettes deliver the nicotine in an aerosol form crucially without the hazards that accompany tobacco smoking. There are, of course, other ways of getting nicotine uh, through patches, gum and lozenges, and nicotine, of course, is not harmless. But action on smoking and health state that there is little real-world evidence of harm from e-cigarettes. There are some trace toxins pr present, but is at a much lower level than in cigarettes. And a recent Economist article sums up the proposition very well. It says, and I quote, People smoke because they value, they, get from, they value the pleasure that they get from nicotine and tobacco over the long-term certainty that their health will be damaged. So it seems rational to welcome a device that separates the dangerous part of smoking, by which we mean the tar, carbon monoxide and smoke, from the nicotine, and that is effectively what an e-cigarette does. The article finishes by rhetorically asking who could object well, Mr Deputy Speaker, it seems the EU can object because it's bringing forward a draft tobacco products directive which proposes to regulate non-tobacco nicotine-containing products, including e-cigarettes, by classifying the majority of these products as medicines. And every product with more than 4 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine would have to be classified. Now, e-cigarettes come in a range of concentrations from zero, which is nicotine-free, up to 48 milligrams per milliliter, with the average user using t t about 18 milligrams per milliliter. And, of course, at a level of 4 mill mill milligrams per milliliter, it means that there would be a de facto ban on these products. They're, they're not medicines. It's, it's a uh, recreational nicotine product. But I don't want just members present or the government to take my word about the benefits of this product. Uh, take my constituent, Mr Preston. Mr Preston and his wife started using uh, e-cigarettes uh, 12 months ago. Previously, he spoke, smoked 30 a day and his wife smoked uh, uh, 20 a day. And they tried all cessation methods available on the market, and none of which had worked. Since starting using e-cigarettes, neither has smoked a conventional cigarette. And Mr Preston estimates they've saved up to £400 per month alone. He's 65 years old, and he tells me that he now wakes up without a heavy chest and immediate cough each morning. He describes it as uh, no longer waking up with that bottom of the birdcage feeling. Another user said, after 32 years of being a smoker, I love my e-cigarette and I never want to uh, try having a cigarette again. Uh, and I'm now on day 50 of giving up the longest as I've ever, measured, I've ever managed. Mr. Deputy Speaker, while I'm not standing here proclaiming that e-cigarettes are a positively healthy alternative smoke, to, smoke, to conventional smoking, I do, do believe that the removal of the hazardous tar from cigarettes, while still providing the nicotine that uh, smokers look for, means this product uh, should be uh, studied very closely and should be saved uh, from this forthcoming EU directive. John Neving. Speaker, I refer the House to my declaration of interest. And there you go. That was Mark Pawsey, the MP for Rugby, who, judging by his position in the House, um, is, is a Tory. Um, but what it goes to show is there are MPs that will listen and there are MPs that will get on their hind legs and actually do something. Now, you heard him read out two, effectively, two letters from his constituents and I can also tell you that uh, he'd been speaking to Jerry Stimson prior to going into the House. And you might have heard a few phrases there that you've heard from Jerry in the past. But Dave, what did you make of that? I, I was uh, just tracking some of the comments in chat and com agree completely we need more like him. 
Uh, it, it does look a bit scary, doesn't it, when they're talking to an empty house like that. But, the, but the, these little speeches there for the benefit of the health minister, they got that message. Uh, the fact that there weren't 300 people stood behind him going hurrah or whatever they do uh, isn't actually that significant. That's the way government works. Um, the, the, the guy was a breath of fresh air, <laughs> uh, something of an antidote to some of the crap that we've been listening to in the last couple of weeks. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he, he, I, he was reading letters from his constituents. Absolutely. He accepted what they said, agreed with what they said, and pushed it at the at the minister. And and minister. and I've and I've got to say as well, he, he's actually been and done some homework and visited a yeah. shop and spoken to people. Sav, what's chat saying? Chat have had loads to say on this, so I'll just read them out as I got them. Moonlit says, "Shame there was nobody there to hear it." By the looks of it, that'll go into Hansard door. Everybody, everybody that needs to know about it will read it. Yep. FMRL says, I'm moving to rugby just so I can write to this guy. Thundercat says, thank goodness someone believes us. FMRL also said, one down, 500 to go. <laughs> M MG Jones said, might not be anyone there to hear it, but it was recorded, so lots will see it. Kronos, finally someone mentions the pleasure we get from vaping. Well done, that man. Mark Shaw, not only on our side, but also sounds like he's done <coughs> his research. Monomax says, let's hope his member of staff keeps reminding him of his duty to us. Liam D. Vapor, he's saying all the right things at least. Lazy Vapor, they work for us. Well, at least he does. And Gary Wood said, that's the first time in my life I have liked what an MP has had to say. Well, and, and <coughs> excuse me, little frog in the throat. <coughs> yes, um, very, 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 very heartening, I have to say. I mean, like, like many have said in chat, uh, as Moonlit said, you know, I, I sat and counted, there were seven MPs plus Mark Posey and three, I'll call them hangers on because I don't know what their proper jobs are. I'm sure they do have jobs and I'm sure they serve a very useful purpose. And it is a little bit disheartening when you say something like that. But Dave, you were saying you know a little bit about this, that, that Hansard oh, and all I, that? I, I am no expert, but I know that whenever I've tuned into those sessions for important things, that there were, there were only a few more people in there when they were debating the last Gulf War to start with. You know, the, the, this is like the preemptive stuff. This is what gets it onto the agenda so it can be a properly debated subject. I've just got to pick up on one of the comments that, that Sav read out there. Somebody said that they, they're going to move to rugby so they can write to this guy. No, 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 no. He's done. <laughs> move to the East Midlands and help me work on Glenis. Ah, <laughs> yes. Glenis the Menace. Glenis the Menace. I want to talk about Glenis the Menace tonight at some length, I have to say. Um, because I would love to bring Glenis the Menace round to our way of thinking. And lest anybody is, uh, is misunderstanding who I'm speaking about, I'm actually speaking about an MEP called Glenis Wilmot. And Dave, Dave can tell you a little bit more about Ms Wilmot. Can you not, Dave? Uh, a little more, yes. Keep uh, it clean. I can tell you Sorry? Keep it clean. <laughs> I will. I promise. Um, uh, I can tell you that she is one of my MEPs, because I live in the East Midlands constituency. Uh, I can tell you that I wrote to her in uh, January, or early February at least, of this year, and got the standard Labour Party reply. Um, I can tell you that she is Labour's leader in Europe. So basically, she's, she's the senior Labour MEP yes. uh, for, uh, for the British uh, Labour Party. Uh, I can tell you that she really, really is anti-ESIG. And we broadcast a couple of times now, we broadcast a little outburst in the, uh, in the NV committee meeting last week, uh, where she said it was crazy that such a harmful drug isn't regulated as a medicine and claimed that it was no more regulated than the pen in her hand and, um, and various other ridiculous statements. I can tell you that I, I sent the letter that I mentioned in my show on Sunday uh, where I basically decomposed what she'd said in that Envy Committee hearing. Uh, bear in mind I'd already received the, uh, the template letter. Mm -hmm. uh, I sent it on Sunday. Uh, I got a reply on Monday uh, asking me to confirm my address. 
because <coughs> basically they weren't going to respond to anybody who definitely wasn't a constituent, I think. So I provided that, and then I got a reply back this morning, and it's the same template letter. So I was a little disheartened there because, uh, you know, the points that she's made, I've already addressed. Uh, so I'm now in the process of sending a third letter to Glenys. Um, or Glenys the Menace, as she shall be known. Uh, opening up by saying how disappointed I am that she clearly hasn't read the last letter I sent. Uh, and I shall try to systematically uh, counter everything in that letter. Do, do you want to see that letter, Dave? I think that's not a bad idea. We might I, as well run can, through it. Um, I could even put it up on the screen, the uh, I think, probably. The, the technology yep. knows there no bounds. Is. Right, Dave's got it on the screen. Let's, let's auto to it. There it goes. Do you want to read it out or shall I? Uh, uh, you knock yourself out if you can. I, I'll do my best. It says, Dear Dave, after a reference that's completely just senseless. Many thanks for writing to me about the important issue of the EU Tobacco Products Directive and how it will affect ele electron ick cigarettes, it says. <laughs> because e-cigarettes are a relatively new product, they are regulated differently in each EU country. Keith would say that's as it should be. Some countries allow e-cigarettes to be sold without any regulation at all. I'm not aware of any, but there you go. Others have banned the sales of e-cigarettes. And again, anyway. As the UK is part of the EU's internal market, it is important that we harmonise the way we deal with this product. Otherwise, consumers could be buying unregulated products which do not conform to basic safety standards, either within their own country or by easily purchasing it over the internet from a neighbouring country. Ooh, that would be terrible, wouldn't it, Dave? I mean, that would be shocking. I, I, yeah, absolutely. Buying something off the interwebs from a country that's not your own, how jingoistic is that? Anyway, the <laughs> European Commission has proposed that all nicotine-containing products with more than 2 milligrams per unit should not be classed as tobacco products. Instead, under the Commission's proposals, nearly all e-cigarettes will need to get authorisation as a pharmaceutical product in the same way as nicotine patches, sprays and gums. And I think, Dave, we need to talk there. I think we need... I think that's a damn good place to start, isn't it? I think that is a damn good place to start. And the, the reason why I'm saying that is that all nicotine-containing products with more than 2 milligrams per unit should not be classed as tobacco products. Instead, under the Commission's proposals, nearly all e-cigarettes will need to get authorisation as a pharmaceutical product in the same way as nicotine patches, sprays and gums. Now, I think there's been some misunderstanding about what's been going on because that's the first time I've seen Glenys the Menace actually telling it like it is. Up until now, she's hidden behind the four milligram malarkey, has she not, Dave? Well, the, the, the general tone from most of the ants has been, we're not banning them. We're not banning them. It's only ones with dangerous levels. Yes. Yeah? And now all of a sudden, there's the, it, it's quite telling in, in that. In that, that, that uh, I, to be fair, Linda McAvan used a very similar expression uh, last week as well. Said nearly all e-cigarettes. Yes. So all of a sudden, you know, that, that's it. The, the pretenses dropped. They are trying to regulate nearly everything. Nearly all. Indeed. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> have, I have in my hand something that would not be regulated. And that would be an ishish. An ishish uh, stick. Well, and then that in itself is an issue that we need to clarify. Yes. It will be regulated. Put, put, your, put, your, put your, your, your face back up, Dave. I forgot I was, uh, I was uh, not on screen. To That's all right. There okay. I was, pointing at the camera, giving it all of that, and nobody can see it. Exactly right. That's one of the first issues. Right. Yes, got you now. E-cigs, or more to the point, liquid that go in e-cigs, will be regulated, period. End of. If they're over four milligrams per uh, milliliter in, in concentration of nicotine in the liquid, they'll be regulated as a medicine. Indeed. Below that, they are still classed as tobacco products. Yes. And they are still subject to the rules in the TPD. And I don't think everybody's getting this point. I think you're exactly right. I think uh, and you, you will no longer be able to buy a 10 milliliter bottle of four milligram juice. 
or 3.5 milliliter milligram juice. That, that won't be allowed. That's it must still be subject to the TPD. And that says that you're only allowed to buy two milligrams per unit. Yes. So if you want 10 mil of juice, that's got to be 0 0.2 milligram strength. If you want to buy a 30 mil bottle, I can't do the maths, um, but it's less than a tenth of a milligram. Yes, it's, 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 it's tiny wing. Zero six something. Well, I, I, would, I would imagine that there'd be some allowance for rounding errors, although that's not exactly certain. But bottom line on it is, even as small a bottle as that, and honestly, I mean, that slips, you know, look, it slips straight through my fingers. I can't hold it. It's so small. Um, I'm used to 30 mils or more. Um, even something as small as that in a usable level of juice, gone. That's it. You'll not be able to get it. You will be able under no, te technically you could but that was a 10 mil bottle was it or a five mil bottle that was a 10 mil bottle of 36 milligram you're not going to get it right uh of not a 36 milligram but you could have 0.2 milligram that would be okay yes. 0 0.2 milligram would be okay well i might i'm sorry i'd rather have uh, pure flavor and stick some tomato sauce in i'd get more of a nick hit out of that well yeah absolutely you would the other thing that we've worked out as well because we've, we've been doing a lot of digging into this this box of five Ishish would fall under the Tobacco Products Directive. So, 30% of the way up along there, you would have a picture of a festering lung or a gob with the teeth falling out or whatever it happens to be. Same on the back. Same with all the messages that these things can seriously damage your health. It would become a tobacco product. And it would be stocked with the tobacco products. It would, in the UK, be hidden behind closed doors. Don't. It's worth pointing out, Dave. It's worth pointing out that probably that'll escape because it's zero nick. But the moment that you've got one nanogram of nicotine in it, then it becomes subject to, doesn't it? Because it has to be a nicotine-containing product. But in, yes. in theory, if you read it the way it's written, then it is subject to. Let, let's say you bought a what is it? It would be a half mil capsule of four milligram juice. That's the most you're going to be able to buy in one unit. Yes. OK, um, that would be subject to 30 percent of the packaging covering with the mouth cancer pictures and, uh, and a statement that said, uh, and I'm doing this from memory here, uh, that they, uh, nicotine is dangerous and will cause damage to your health. So something incorrect. It, it's, something yes. that they have no evidence to support it's, it's nic nicotine is a dangerous product and could harm your health or this product could harm your health yeah this i'm just going to get the exact word in in front of me now here it is it says bu, 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 bu. this product contains nicotine and can damage your health yes uh, you know 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.000001 milligram juice would be subject to that and you're never ever going to be able to buy a bottle that contains more than two milligrams of nicotine. No. Sav, have, got, have chat got anything to say about all of this? Chat, I've got loads to say. <laughs> There's a shock. <laughs> I've got a couple of comments that came in about um, Mark Posey, which I'll read through first, and then I'll get on to the rest. Okay, okay. Um, Mitch says, at least we can... Sorry, Mitch Dog says... <laughs> At least we can point our own MEPs towards this guy in this speech. Can't be anything other than handy. And Russell Ord says, It shows the importance of e-cig businesses and shops in particular, showing and informing people of the product face to face. His speech shows the power of education person to person. Then we've got Leanna Lawless, who's talking about uh, Glenis the Menace, who says, Glenis is an anti-cancer and COPD charity supporter. Mm-hmm. Moonlit says, actually, the pen in her hand is quite well regulated. The ink flow is, at least. Otherwise, it'd leak like a CE2. Yes. Kronos. Who said that? That's who said that? Who said that? That was Moonlit. That's tickled me to death. <laughs> Quality. Class, that is. <laughs> oh, yes. Take two gold stars and sharpen the rubbers. Brilliant, that. <laughs> Kronos says, cigarettes aren't regulated any more than e cigs currently. For anyone with the money, what's she smoking? Because it's more potent than nicotine, I think. Mm. Phil Emerson says, the trouble with the Labour Party is everything has to be politically correct now. There are no free-thinking left-wing party members anymore. True. Thundercat has said, 
I've had that one, as have many. Oh, regarding the letter, sorry. Uh-huh. Um, Gillis has said, has anyone checked out um, Glennis' sponsors or interests? You would have to ask why, big question mark. Mm-hmm. Marco Van Basten says, sounds like she has passed the directive already. Thomas B.S. says, I have no problem with banning dangerous levels of 100 milligrams or more. Rachel Coffey says, medical regulation at any level holds no legal water without therapeutic claims. So, screw that. Her words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> NY Tech says, that's the whole problem with the EU. It's attempting to morph from a trading unit into a super state. Uh, Rachel has also said, if the EU pursues um, the medical line, the industry will have to sue and the industry would win. But, grrr. Kerry Henderson has said 0.2 milligram juice, the effectiveness of which would be so negligible, I'd be back on the cigarettes, to which an awful lot of people agreed. And yeah, including me. Yep, me as well. Rachel has also said, as a Canadian, I'm taking a strong interest in this situation. The Canadian government claims a juice with nicotine is a medicines drug drug, and our classification of what drug means is the same as the UK. The only difference is the EU is aggressively pursuing the issue. And Lazy Vapor has said, Regarding people who are talking about stocking up on nicotine, he says, even if you have the stock to last a lifetime, what about freedom of choice for people who haven't even started vaping yet? And, you know, that's, that's, that's the big thing. I mean, as we said last week, and I've, I've, I've got something prepped that I'm going to do in, in the middle half that I want, I want to, to kind of read out and get feedback on. But, yeah, I think everything everybody said in that is so true, is so right. And when you look at what Mark Pawsey did, in, in the adjournment debate and how beautifully he put it across. And, what you know, it was as good as it needed it to be. Absolutely smashing. And then you get a look at where Glenis the Menace is sitting on all of this. They couldn't be any further apart, which just kind of says to me, we need to be getting on to people like Glenis the Menace and putting them right. In our thousands, in our tens of thousands, in our hundreds of thousands. Because if we don't... She's going to carry on because she's very voluble, is Glennis, isn't she, Dave? Uh, I my signal played up a little bit there. I heard, isn't she, Dave? I'm saying, Glen. <laughs> I'm saying, Glennis is very voluble. Uh, she, uh, she's very slappable. <laughs> I, I can tell you that much. The, 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 the thing that gets me is that. Uh, th- th- there are two possible theories as to why she is taking up such a strong anti stance. Uh, I have read today on, va- on on the UK Vapors forum a theory that she may have links to a pharmaceutical company. Right? Let me just uh, let me just uh, say, for the sake of her lawyers, I don't think that's the case at all. I think the second theory is the most likely, and that is its incompetence. Um, but I have just seen firsthand, I am currently having my third attempt to get her to listen to the point that I'm making. Yes. Um, uh, the, she, the, the entire text of that letter that we started to read there is geared towards, um, it, it basically shows a complete lack of recognition. Well, maybe we should carry on through it, Dave. Maybe we should pull another little bit out of that letter. I think you're right. Let's let's take a quick blast Do you want of. Want me ad- to take the next couple of paragraphs? Well, let me let's take a quick blast of adverts, and when we come back, we'll do the next couple of paragraphs. Um, because I would hate to think that anybody's blood was under boiling point at this point in time. Um, and we'll just give them a couple of minutes rest. And when we come back, we'll take the next couple of paragraphs, and then I've got a few answers that people might like to. Uh, To bear in mind, we will be back in two ticks.
Weber and I Weber Elixir, based in Yorkshire, for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Elixir.co.uk. iWeber and iWeber-Elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. chat i did not forget this week to upgrade chat but we've had to just hold fire and take stock we're actually looking at a couple of different options and it's taking longer to get the replies that we want than we would ideally want but i didn't forget and we are aware we need a bigger chat room <laughs> we'll fix it soon i promise that's it there you go not guilty wasn't me you heard it from dave dave's the man he's the guy that does all of that kind of stuff i just sit here and look ugly um, shall we take the next two paragraphs then, Dave? Okay, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, ju I'll just read it rather than put it on screen. Go on then. Uh, we got as far as the bit that was where she was saying it needs to be uh, authorization as a pharmaceutical product, nicotine patches, sprays, guns, blah, blah. Right. She then goes on to say, of course, there's a balance to strike. Don't get your hopes up. On the one hand, e-cigarettes have the potential to be a helpful way to help somebody quit smoking entirely and greatly improve their health. On the other hand, e-cigarettes currently can contain up to 48 milligrams of nicotine, far more than a regular cigarette, making them highly addictive. As nicotine is the drug that makes cigarettes addictive, somebody that tries e-cigarettes could be much more likely to go on and smoke regular cigarettes. Furthermore, there is no evidence that e-cigarettes are safe, and it is concerning that they are being marketed as a healthy alternative to smoking. Currently, we do not have any conclusive evidence either, either that e-cigarettes are helpful for giving up smoking or that they encourage it. Now, she's caveated the hell out of that, but she's made a point. Her point is that, A, she thinks they're a quit aid. Yep. She used the, the okay, I, I actually, in, in my letter to her, asked her what she meant and what, what her reasoning was for claiming in that meeting uh, in Brussels last week that they should be available only, quote, as a cessation method. Um, I asked her why on earth she felt that was the case. Um, the 48 milligram thing, th th these people are stupid. They, 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 they cannot ab absorb the fact. I, I, I swear that Glenys Wilmot thinks that you buy an electronic cigarette you use it and you throw it away i suspect you are correct that's the only I suspect explanation that she has no clue oh let's be honest guys you've got companies like e-lights out there telling you that the, how many well, you buy an 18 milligram e-cig and it's got what about half a mill of juice in it 0 0.7 milligrams uh 0 0.7 the sake milligrams. Of argument, let's say it's got like eight or nine milligrams uh, milligrams of nicotine in it and they're claiming that's worth 20 cigarettes yes so she doesn't she doesn't realise that forty eight milligrams or you know the, the the level that they're basing their cigarette calculation on is per cigarette, not per packet. This is the kind of fundamental stupidity that she's basing her views on, and yet I cannot get the message through to her that her science is all bad, her numbers are all wrong. Um, that. The statement that we don't know if they're a healthy alternative to smoking. I asked her the question specifically, you know, as somebody that's concerned with health, you must at least be familiar with the concept of harm reduction. No reply on that either so far. I will be trying again. I will be trying again. Um, the other thing in that paragraph that, that is quite worrying is there's still this, this idea of it being a gateway to smoking, which is, you know, why would somebody who vapes switch to cigarettes why would they start spending more uh take the the, the additional risk uh of the of, of of endangering their health by doing it uh give up the variety of flavorings and, and how pleasant the experience is it makes no sense that somebody would go from vaping to smoking um but this is one of the reasons that they're going to call it a medicine yes go figure well I, I had a little bit of a, 
I don't know what you would call it. Uh, I'm going to call it a mind fart. I, I, I got really, really fed up of, of seeing that particular response that you've had, Dave, and, and a, a whole host of other people have had as well. And it's not just from Glenis the Menace, it's been from all the Labour lot. And I thought, right, I need to sit down and gather my thoughts on this and try and put together something to, to show them. To be able to say, right, folks, point at this. And, and I'm kind of mapping it out and it goes a bit like this. I've called it countering the crit critics for the time being. And we'll, let's start with quit or die. Nicotine, had it traditionally been delivered in a nice mug with a frothy top and cinnamon sprinkles, would not have had its current association with COPD, lung cancer, heart disease and so on, because it just wouldn't have caused them. Indeed, in such a form, it would not be associated with significant health hazards or any incapacitations and its potential to induce dependence would not pose a serious problem either for the individual or society in that respect it would be almost exactly like caffeine that therefore suggests that there is no real need to quit using nicotine and that would be true were it not for one thing and that one thing is burning tobacco now numerous studies have shown that smokers smoke for nicotine look at john Britton. look at all of the people that know about this they smoke for nicotine, but they're damaged by the smoke. Mark Pawsey said that in his delivery. The nicotine they want does them very little harm. It's the method of delivery that causes the problems. So what happens if you change the delivery method? What would happen if we could remove the death from a cigarette, but leave all the pleasure? And the answer must surely be that we'd all but eradicate the almost 700,000 premature deaths caused reportedly by the use of lit tobacco in Europe every year. If we believe the rhetoric from the anti-smoking industry and confine ourselves only to the UK, somewhere in the region of 10 million lives would be transformed. They would be given another 10 to 15 years longer to live. Now, Glennis also brought up the notion of dual fueling. I heard that come up. It wasn't just her, there was a few others as well. And I thought, well, what about the dual fueler? Well, think back three, four weeks. The Department of Health tells us that every 15 cigarettes you smoke creates one mutation. It causes one mutation in your body. The dual fueler, by definition, refuses the... Uh, refuses, reduces their intake of smoked cigarettes every time they use an e-cig. Because if they were going to have a fag and they use an e-cig, they're not having a fag. So if a 20 a day smoker replaces just 15 cigarettes a day with e-cig usage, then their exposure to mutation reduces to 25% of what it once was. And if you go down to one a day, it goes down to 5% of, what it, what, of what it once was. The maths is obvious and it's incontrovertible. And finally, let's look at this, this risk of somebody moving up, uh, moving on from e-cigs to, to uh, tobacco. And it's, it's a risk versus benefit scenario, which the EU has to take into account. Now, there is a risk, but it's very, very low, that someone who took up nicotine usage via an e-cig might move to smoke combustible cigarettes. But if anybody, anybody out there was to compare a flavoured e-cig, whatever it happens to be, uh, whether it's DY4, whether it's custard, whether it's vanilla, whether it's strawberry, whether it's chocolate, it doesn't make any difference. If you compare the flavour of that with the flavour of a combustible cigarette, especially if you're a new starter to them, you'd take one drag off a fag and you'd throw up. It's not going to happen. And that's just one of the reasons why the flavours that are available are as important as they are. They represent a barrier to entry. For tobacco cigarettes and a major barrier to relapse in people that have already made the switch to e-cigs so summon it all up an e-cig represents the cleanest form of delivery that's acceptable to smokers and it has to be acceptable to smokers in order to work in terms of nicotine use initiation an e-cig is no worse than coffee either for the individual or for the general public we know that to be true it's been stated many times 
Because of the cleanliness of its delivery of nicotine, the e-cig has potential to completely eradicate tobacco-related diseases, or actually more, more appropriately, smoking-related diseases, such as lung cancer, COPD, and so on, by effectively obsoleting smoked tobacco. And given the nature of the benefits, the risk of somebody initiating nicotine use with an e-cig and moving to lit tobacco is far outweighed by the benefits to the generality of the public because the numbers are likely to be so small. And finally, normalization, which I'm sure Glenis the Menace will come on to. If you look at the long term, if 90% of the nicotine using public are using e-cigs and that is seen as the norm, much as no one considers a coffee or tea drinker to be a deviant, how the hell is that a problem, given what we've said above? Now, what we've got to do, I think, is convince Glenis the Menace that that's the case. Dave, what do you make of it? Well, the th first thing I'm going to say to that is you've encaptured the lot there, and we need to get that, we need to get that sort of level of... Of, of observation out there so people can use that, Dave. That, 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 that's a cracking piece of work. Um, I, I remain sceptical that I can influence, influence somebody like Glennis that much. I sense that there's something deeper there than uh, just uh, a political line. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know, maybe she was mugged by an e-cig vendor or something. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. But um, the, the, uh, it, the, the, the frustration in this is that a lot of the facts and what you've just, just delivered there, that, that's, all, that's not supposition. That, that's all stuff that, that, that can be substantiated. substantiated. It, it, it's, it's, it's valid information that you've just given and we can't get them to hear it. And that's what we need to find out. That's what we've got to find out how to do and get it get happening very, very quickly. Yes. Well, my, my intention with that little bit, and one of the reasons I wanted to run it by everybody, was I'm going to sit down and put together um, a little video that says exactly that. That's kind of the script for it. That's why I was reading it, because I don't normally read things, as everybody, I think, knows. But that's kind of the script of where I'm going, and I want to put some graphics and everything on that. And if people are up for that, that's, that's cool. I'll get that done, and I'll try and get that done within the next week. So I've, I can see the furrowed brow that says there's chat activity. And I think we need to take that before we take the next advert. So, Sav, it's over oh, to you. There's gazillions of things coming from chat. Are they being busy? They are. So I'll apologise in advance to chat if I don't get their comments. But, oh... Right, I'll start at the top and work my way down. Gary Wood regarding regulation says, Regulation I can deal with, but this is draconian. Mark Shaw regarding Glennis the Menace. She is just a closed mind. She sees cigar legs, she sees vapour on exhale and just thinks smoking. Rat Fink has actually got a question. She says, can we contact Glennis even if we're not in her constituency? Can I come back and answer that? Yeah, can. Right, she must have a constituency office. She must have a constituency office. She has to have a base in the UK. I would suggest that it would be a good idea if somebody found out that, where that was and found out when she's going to be there. Hang on, I'll make a little graphic. Okie dokie. <laughs> Dave's Carry on, I'll, I'll put that together. It'll be on screen before the end. Right, you hope that's what we like to hear. I think Correct. If, if we can do that, if we can find out where it is and when she's going to be there, and we can make that known to not only our viewership, but everybody in the UK that's in the ESIG world. If there was a flash mob, wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> Back to you, Sav. Right. Old Git says, what Glenis the Menace effectively wants to do is to condemn those who would like to take up vaping to a life on cigarettes. Because we all know that NRT does not work. She must be getting a very fat backhander for her trouble. That was from Old Git. Vaping Viking says, there's no other reason for that sort of pig-headedness. Either she's stupid or she's getting paid. Steve37UK says, 
It may be just me, and I may be missing the point, but in this day and age, we seem to be going backwards. In one hand, you have A6 and the other normal 6, but they want to ban A6. Why not ban the normal 6? Normal 6 kill thousands, A6 kill nobody. Where has the sense in the world gone, or is it just me? I, I'm just going to interject there. Is it just like, yeah, I, I, nobody can give an answer that will satisfy me, <laughs> an answer to that question, you know. If they want to ban e cigs because of everything that's evil about cigarettes, how come cigarettes are still going to be on sale? I, th I think secretly we all know the answer. Sorry, rant over. I think you're probably right, dear Sav. Right, Phil Emerson has said, Mr Kitson, you will find that it's pointless trying to point out to anyone within the Labour Party as their views are always correct and we are just mere cattle who need to be prodded in the right direction. This is why myself and thousands more have left the Labour Party. Very Boring says, if Labour won't listen to us, we need to rope in the unions and to try and up the pressure on them. Gary Wood Ooh, has said... Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I had not thought of that because, let's face it, Labour and the unions, absolutely, yes, without a shadow of a doubt. Sav, while you were talking, I'm just going to uh, put a, a, a... It'll not be you that's on screen, it's going to be Dave. No problem. Okie dokie, carry on. Right. Gary Wood said, coffee is addictive, alcohol is addictive, sex is addictive. Will they regulate that too? Kerry Henderson said, the studies that have been done on nicotine have stated that the TSNAs are negligible and that's on nicotine derived from a tobacco source. Mm -hmm. Jill CB says, none of them have any idea of the PVs we use. They all think about the looky likey disposables. I felt that with the Matthew Wright show. Sam Monroe. If she really thinks they're not safe, then surely they'd still not be safe as a cessation product. Double standards or a breach of competition antitrust law? There's that. Very boring says, individuals can be smart, but people are stupid, especially these people we're having to deal with for the most part. Rachel Coffey has said, good point, Dave K, and there's never been one documented case of anyone being so stupid as to start vaping and then graduate to smoking. Sigh. Kerry Henderson, I bet she didn't go on about the child who ate 15 nicotine lozenges and nearly died. Now that has happened. Has it happened with a child drinking e-liquid? No, because it tastes foul and nicotine lozenges don't. Lazy Vapor said, that's the problem, DD. The government don't understand pleasure. To which Leanna Lawless said, ban pleasure. Moonlit has said, less cigarettes is better than all cigarettes, surely regarding the dual fuel uh, argument. Say biscuit, indeed I vape for pleasure, I'm not ill, it's not a medical device. FMRL, I think the banning of A6 to prevent vapors going back to cigarettes, then banning A6 will effectively do just that. I made that sentence up. If they're thinking of banning A6 to prevent vapors going back to cigarettes, <laughs> <laughs> then banning A6 will effectively do just that. I'm pleased to hear it's not just me then. <laughs> no! <laughs> Say biscuit again, from birth to death, the human body's DNA goes through thousands of mutations in their lifetime. To which Winter Rogue replied, Good Lord, Say Biscuit, ban DNA. Moonlit has said, As far as I can tell, cigarettes offer zero advantage over A6, only downsides. There's no part of smoking I'd have rather I'd have brought with me to vaping. Monomax says, can you please clear up the meaning of dual fueling, which I'll let you do in a sec, because I've only got two more comments to okay. get through. Safer6 says, I've invited my local MEPs to come visit me for a day and see behind the scenes to see how this all works. And Kronos has said, regarding your letter that you've just read out, which everyone was full of praise for, he says, can you please put that up on the site, Dave? That's an excellent summary of the pertinent points. Right. Thank you for that, Sav. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope everybody's managed to get the, uh, the gist of that graphic uh, that Dave put up. Thank you for that, Dave. Um, yeah, my pleasure. Very useful. Dual fueling is very simply using both e-cigs and traditional lit tobacco cigarettes. It's, and it's not something with which I have a problem. I do know that there are people that do have a problem with it. And I, for the life of me, I don't understand why. I've got to, if you like, state my vested interests and all the rest. I am a libertarian. I mean, there isn't a political party in the UK that I can possibly subscribe to because they're all control freaks one way or another. They all want to control something. I want to control 
nothing. I believe it's down to the individual to control his or her own actions with the one overriding principle that you cause nobody else any harm. That's as simple as it is. And if everybody did that, there'd be no problem. However, the dual fuelers, as I said earlier on, they might, for instance, get out of bed on a morning and light up an ordinary tobacco or cigarette and that might kickstart their day for them and that's cool. The rest of the day, the rest of the day, they may spend using e-cigs at whatever level with whatever flavour of whatever kind. It makes absolutely no difference. I personally have three of my very best and closest friends that dual fuel. And, and I'm not making that up. They are my very best and closest friends and they're dual fuel. You will never, ever see me turn my nose up at any of them. And you will always find that if somebody decides to attack them, I'll be straight at that attacker because it's, it's just wrong to do. We each have the right to follow the path that we decide as long as we do no harm to others and we're fully educated on what the risks of anything are. I mean, by the same token, my son-in-law, he's a rabid walker. He loves climbing up and down the hills in, in the lakes and stuff like that. Now, I think, I think that particular pastime is the height of idiocy because I've said for a million years, if the good Lord had meant us to walk up hills, he wouldn't have invented it. Land Rover. It's that simple. <laughs> it's dead easy. You know, that's the, that's the way I look at it. I've got no interest in doing anything like that and it annoys me when I see news reports of people being dragged off these mountains and hills and what have you, um, comatose and, and, and so on and so forth. But that's what dual fueling is. I've got to take a quick ad break and then we'll, we'll take the show home. We will be back in a very, very, very short order of minutes. Not be long. Uh, I've just got to find the right button. Here it is. We'll be back in two. Here we go. <laughs> and we're back live. Welcome back to VT Talk on here, here on uh, Wednesday the 27th of March. The current time is 9.53 and 46 seconds. I was a bit late with the ads. I do apologise to that. But I would say, do spend your money with our advertisers. They keep us going so we can keep you going with all the information that we can. Dave, was there any further paragraphs from uh, Dennis the Menace? Or? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> give, us, give us a salient one. Let's, let's have a real mm, before we go out. We went nearly to the end there. Um, uh, oh, I was editing, wasn't I? Just strip out that address. Here we go. While we don't have the scientific evidence to rely on, this is talking about the health, you know, whether uh, e-cigs are a healthy alternative. I think it is wise to have a cautious approach to e-cigarettes. Oh. If you just, to quote, you know, to use a, a commonly accepted internet phrase, if you just shut the fuck up at that point, <laughs> I wouldn't have had it. I wouldn't have had an issue with that. That's that's a reasonable statement. I didn't realise you had any ducks. Well, quite. <laughs> uh, if they are effective in helping people to stop smoking, then it is appropriate that they are regulated in the same way as other smoking cessation tools such as nicotine patches. There you mm. go. There's a paragraph we could do an hour on. Uh, well, uh, you know, and the rest. I don't use it for cessation. I told you this in the bloody letter that this is a reply to. Yes. Ah. 
I, I mean, I, you know, I'm entirely with you. I, 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 I just, I do not, for the life of me, understand why they've got this quit or die thing going on all the flaming time. It's got nothing to do with quit or die. Right. Well, 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 well you know, that, that's that's worth a few seconds on, Dave. Right. There, there, there are two, again, there are two possible reasons why that these people only see quit or die. One is they have an interest in quit or die as a strategy. Yeah. And I have no information on that. You know, as it relates to Glynis, I have no information. No, but we're going to go digging. She, yeah, she's tight with pharmaceutical lobbying groups or what. I, I just don't know. Um, the, the, the other reason, and this is, this is my preferred explanation for just about all of the crap that these people say to us, is they're incompetent. Mm. But it has to be said, we, as a community, and the people we buy stuff from, as an industry, have not helped our case here. No, we haven't. They keep using the word quit. Yes. Quit, cessation, two words, same thing. We've perpetuated this idea that they are a cessation product. What we have? We, on, this, on this channel, we have been banging on about this for over two years, and it looked like we got away with it for a while, and now this has popped back up again. But it was always the case. Remember that I don't buy from quick, quick kit vendors. Uh, if you check my forum, Sig, it's still there. It's still in there, you know. I mean, uh, it was something that Jim kicked off, wasn't it? Uh, mm. Vapor Miss Jim. Um, he, he did that little graphic. There was a reason for that, and and you know, okay, it's probably not the main reason, but we've handed them evidence to suggest that what we're doing is just a more successful alternative. The nicotine patches. You reap what you sow, guys. You reap what you sow. Absolutely, absolutely. But I mean, you know that that particular horse has bolted. We've we've now got, I suppose, to do the best job that we can. And let me yeah. exhort everybody to do what we keep exhorting everybody to do. They need more information. They need more input from us, the consumers. It's become the last paragraph. Go on, let's go for it. We've got not very long. The Commission proposal is not final and there will be many months of negotiations by the European Parliament as well as health ministers from the UK and other EU countries before the legislation is agreed. During this time, Labour MEPs will be looking carefully at all of the measures to try and find the best way to ensure that we effectively reduce smoking rates in the UK and across Europe. Thanks again for writing to me on this important issue. Now, I don't believe that. If they can get this through in September, this is going through in September. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is a don't worry, don't worry your head about that. You know, it'll all be okay. Nanny will uh, take care of you. Nanny will look after you. Nanny will powder your bottom. The significant thing on that is during this time, Labour MEPs will be looking carefully. Glenys speaks for Labour in Brussels. Yes. Glenys is the person that we have to either A, convince and see the error of her ways, or B, scare to the point that you can't ignore us anymore politically. Let's start talking in terms of votes. Yes. I, 750,000 papers in the UK. Uh -huh. That's the figure that Ash are publishing currently? That, yeah, 700,000 to 750,000. There are there This is Ash, funded by the government. Their numbers are pretty reliable. Mm -hmm. 750,000 votes is enough to make them at least listen to us. We need, we need to get in their faces. If, you, if I would go as far as saying target your Labour MEPs. They're the ones that need convincing. The Lib Dems are listening. The Conservatives... Are with it. The Conservatives are with us, basically. You keep are with us. Who cares about their motives? You know, <laughs> they're going to vote to give us what we want. Labour are the biggest danger in the UK to getting this through at the moment. Absolutely right. Here's what I think everybody needs to be doing: Twitter, follow Glennis Wilmot. If she sees, I don't know, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 more people following her as of tonight and tomorrow and then starts wondering why she gets bombarded with messages, keep them polite, it might make a difference. Write to her, you are entitled to. 
She sits on that committee. They have. She has a blog. She ha she has a blog. Ha <laughs> ha! Get up the blog. There you go. Where's the blog at, Dave? It's uh, coming up on screen when I click the right button. Hopefully, click it. There it is. Gleniswilmot.org.uk. Glenis you can leave comments for her there. That will give you access. That's all you need to know. All the other information on that screen that you can see is at Glenniswilmot.org.uk. That's Wilmot with two L's and two T's. It is not as we we almost settled on on UK Vapors earlier. Glennis will not. No. <laughs> it's Will Mott. Will Mott. Mott. Right. So there you go. Target. Target. Seek and destroy. Let's get all the information there. Let's make it impossible for her to ignore it. Because if she can't ignore it, she's got to do something about it. Be polite. Don't be abusive. But be there. Be in her face. As, as always, the most important people are our viewers. So, Sav, the last word has to go to you with chat. I'll got three comments that I'm going to read out. Vaporman says, I want to send Glennis a nice new bobo to play with as I think there's something missing in her life. <laughs> Fuzzy, <laughs> Fuzzy said regarding our government. Does not kill says, you? That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send the Vaseline with a fiery jack. <laughs> Fuzzy has said regarding our government, we want them to quit being dictators. And my favourite quote of the night yet again goes to Moonlit, who says, I'll powder my own bottom, thank you very much. And well you should, Moonlit. Well said, that man. Ladies and gentlemen, time has come once again. We've reached the end of the show. Tomorrow night, here's our... We'll be looking at some product. It's not going to be political. It's going to be fun. I don't know who's going to be here. It could be it, it could be all kinds happening. But can I say a big, big thank you to both Dave and Sav for joining me tonight here in the, the Nouveau Kitchen Hotel. <laughs> it's just where yeah. I put it. Still covered in dust. It does look nice, though. Um, I'll see you tomorrow night. But a big, big thank you to you all for tuning in. Thank you so much. You've got no idea how much it means to all of us. We really, really appreciate it. Until the next time we see you, from Dave, Sav, Kat, Daz, Marco, Gary, Mark. Have I missed anybody? Andy. Andy. Oh, uh -huh. Mr Sutton, he's on on Saturday, he's all right. Anybody? Yeah, from all, from everybody here on VTTV, thank you so much. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Good night. <laughs>